Good morning. The Lord be with you. And the Lord especially be with our mothers whom we honor this Mother's Day. How many of you had a mother? <laughs> All right, so the day really does apply to everyone. I know it can be a sad day for those who may have wanted that privilege and it never came their way, but, uh, but we can certainly be thankful for the moms that we've had that have cared for us or other mothering kinds of individuals. Could be a teacher or whomever. Uh, I had a Sunday school teacher, Miss Caroline, I still remember that way uh, very fondly. All righty, and welcome to our guests this morning. We have Tara all the way from Georgia. How's that? Um, isn't that a great name for someone from the South? Tara, you know, kind of earthy name. Oh, that's terrible. All right. <laughs> Uh, several uh, announcements I want to make now because I want to include them in the prayers. And I, I really don't like using the prayers to uh, have shock people if, if things are happening around them. Um, you may have seen already in the news and heard St. Paul's Lutheran Church on Main Street in Elma or Blossom uh, had a, a fire yesterday. And uh, we read this morning uh, on the internet it's a total loss. Uh, uh, their steeple and their roof completely burned off. There's a big hole in the uh, ceiling or the roof of the church and probably with all that water pouring in, it's just a complete loss. So we're going to keep them in our prayers. They're, they're worshiping at another church this morning in West Seneca, but uh, we'll try to approach them and, and ask if there's anything we can help out with as a, a sister Lutheran church. They're not Missouri Synod. They, jo they join the, the church body called the LCMC, um, but we can still reach out and, and help them without a doubt. Also, oh, you did already? Oh, wonderful. Oh, okay, excellent. Okay, good, good. Well, thank you for doing that, and if they get in touch with you, let us know. That's good. Also, some of you may know Pastor Richard Bleemaster from Salem Lutheran Church for many years. I don't have the details. He was in a, a pretty serious car accident, and he's in the hospital. That's, I really just don't know anymore. I've looked and looked. I can't find out anything on that one. In, it was in Springville? No, he grew oh. oh, he grew up in Springville. Okay. But we'll keep him in our prayers as well. And his wife, because his wife was in Greenfields for a while, and she really needs a lot of care without him around, that's going to be very difficult. Didn't he just celebrate his what, 90th birthday? Edgar says that he's still a kid. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, we'll keep him in our prayers. And today, of course, uh, along with Ma Mother's Day is 514, and in Buffalo that means uh, that very uh, tragic time, and we still continue to grieve over that uh, uh, mass, uh, massive gun shooting and the 10 lives that were lost, but uh, it continues, doesn't it? It's just very, very sad in our country, this rash of uh, gun shootings and, and uh, mass shootings that are occurring. So all those things we'll, we're going to remember in our prayers today. And uh, if that weren't enough, today yet we're observing the ascension of our Lord, and we'll talk more about that in the service. Let's rise now and join in singing together our opening hymn, Hymn of Glory, let us sing stanzas one through three and stanza six. Christ by a road before on 
trod ascends unto the throne of God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The holy apostolic band upon the Mount of Olives stand. Alleluia, alleluia. And with his faithful followers three see and in majesty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, renew us, and lead us, so that we, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, glorious look, took his gloriously took his throne, ascending to your right hand. Grant that we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading today is from the book of Acts, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid from him their sight. They were gazing intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you read Psalm 47 responsively? Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. 
God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. To God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, in the beginning is now, now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Today's epistle lesson is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We join in singing the hymn of the day for the ascension. On Christ's ascension I now build. On Christ's ascension I now build the hope of my ascension. 
this hope alone has always stilled all doubt and apprehension. For where the head is, there as well, I know his members have to dwell when Christ will come and come. Since Christ returned to claim his throne, great gifts for me obtaining, <clears throat> my heart will rest in him alone. No other rest remaining. For where my treasure went be still their deepest yearning. O oh, grant, dear Lord, this grace to me, recalling your ascension, that I may serve you faithfully in thanks for The joy, the assurance, and the peace of our risen and ascended Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with us. And the promise of his spirit has been outpoured. May that spirit open our hearts and our minds as Jesus opened up the scriptures to his disciples that we might know his word and his will. In Jesus' name, amen. That word for us today is from our first lesson, Acts chapter 1, verse 11, and also from the gospel lesson, both accounts written by Dr. Luke on the ascension of our Lord Jesus. There are five major great festivals that are observed by God's church in the Christian year. And I know you know them. If I ask you to write them all down, I'd be surprised if almost anyone uh, would miss any one of them, except perhaps possibly one. Uh, of course, what do we celebrate in the wintertime in December? The major festival of Christmas. And a little bit later, the, the coming and the adoration of the Magi from the East, that festival is called epiphany right and then of course uh, a little bit later at the end of holy week we celebrate the risen christ on easter of course and 40 days later we celebrate what we celebrate what ascension yeah well we know that happened 40 days after jesus arose but we rarely celebrate it at least on the ascension and of course not next sunday but the following sunday 10 days after the ascension we celebrate that other well-known uh, festival called the uh, pouring of the spirit on pentecost yeah why is it we forget about the ascension though um, I, i'm not sure all these other festivals, well, Christmas is, is a movable festival. We don't only celebrate Christmas on Sunday. Um, we do, uh, in many churches, we'll have an epiphany service on the epiphany, but not always on a Sunday. Um, Easter, well, that one's always on a Sunday. And the Ascension is always on a Thursday. 
Is that why we kind of forget about it? I know oftentimes we observe it as we are today on either the Sunday before or the Sunday after. The Ascension is this Thursday. How, about, how many of you would love to gather together Thursday night for worship here? Yeah, I, I think that's why it's, it's become somewhat forgotten, and yet it's a major message and fest festival for us to observe what a wondrous as we sang blessing it is to us to know that Christ has completed all that was laid out for him according to God's will and now God the Father welcomes him as he ascends back to his throne in heaven. Now, it hasn't always been a, a forgotten festival. I do remember as a child in my church, I, I believe we did worship uh, on uh, Thursday, the, the day of the ascension, and I complained loud and clear, why do we got to go to church on Thursday? This is crazy. We got to go on Sundays too. Anyways, uh, but in the, in the Middle Ages, they used to observe the ascension in a very interesting kind of way. They used to observe the ascension and they would take a statue of the, the blessing Christ or the ascending Christ and they'd uh, hoist him up through a hole in the roof of the church at a certain time during the service, kind of remembering the ascending of our Lord Jesus Christ. And once he was out of the roof, they shut the door, of course. Well, I'm not suggesting we cut a hole in the roof and do the same. I do remember the church where I grew up at had that blessing uh, a Jesus statue and the entranceway when you came into the church. But today we celebrate that our Lord Jesus Christ now has fulfilled what we talked about in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. Now he has prepared a place for us kind of a, in a nutshell summary that we, we're going to uh, unfold a little more. Uh, today we celebrate Jesus has fulfilled all that was laid out for the Messiah to accomplish. Luke has shared that in his gospel and now in, in his second book uh, that he writes for someone named Theophilus, but certainly many others, he continues on with the next part of the mission of the church itself. But Jesus has fulfilled all that was uh, his Father's will for him to accomplish as the Messiah. And now Jesus empowers and he sends out his disciples into the world. Jerusalem, Judea, yeah, and even to those half-breed, Gentile-type Samaritans, yeah, to them and to the ends of the earth. Our goal and our mission as Christians is what? Is it to get to heaven? I, I, we oftentimes think that, don't we? Gee, I, I hope I believe enough. I hope, you know, I've done this or that. Well, of course, that's a problem right there. I hope that God really takes me to be with him in heaven and that I can believe in what his promises are in scripture and so forth. But it's not, that's not our goal and our mission. Our goal and our mission is laid out so well in this ascension. It's not that we so much get to heaven, but be assured if you believe in Christ as your Savior, heaven is your home in eternity. But it's to take as many others with us to heaven as well by going at to, to the ends of the earth and sharing this good news of the gospel. At the, the end of our, or our first reading, uh, Jesus ascends up into the heavens, into the clouds. And they're all kind of looking up and gazing and wondering, what, what now? What just happened? They've seen some pretty amazing things. And I suspect if I had been on that mountain, I would have been gazing up into heaven too. What happens next? A couple of angels, they, they're described in our translation as two men dressed in white came and said, you know, why are you still looking up? I, the older version or translate, why are you gazing up into heaven? Don't you realize, you know, Jesus has ascended and he will return as you've seen him go. But now go, go to Jerusalem 
and wait for that power of the Spirit. Wait for that promise to be fulfilled that God has uh, promised to give you from the Father. And of course, then go out into the world. Stop gazing and get going. As we unfold this text a little bit more, every section of our outline, I could have prepared a little half sheet outline for you today, I suppose, uh, is, is headed by a word that begins with S. So maybe today, later on, you can re remember this uh, message and, and that'll give you a clue at help. It begins with staging. You know how you get ready and you stage things? You know, we, we uh, uh, Lynn and I were looking at uh, inviting mom to come over for dinner. Well, dad, you can come too. And, uh, uh, and, and what, we'd have to do some staging. We'd been gone for a, a few days and the house would have to be picked up a little bit. We'd have to, un, you know, get stuff off the chair so we could sit. But anyways, um, staging. Luke took care of that in the gospel, all that Jesus had said and suffered. Now it's been revealed, and what Luke was pointing to is that Jesus truly is the Messiah. And that Messiah has been faithful and accomplished the work of salvation. Now, things continue on. That work of salvation has been accomplished. Remember at Jesus' baptism when uh, John says, no, 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 you shouldn't baptize me, I should baptize you, or I shouldn't baptize you, you should baptize me. And Jesus said, no, all this must be done so that all righteousness might be fulfilled. I think what we're seeing is that's been fulfilled. So all of this staging has happened. The years that Jesus taught his disciples and he displayed to them and revealed to them who he was now has taken place. And he still opens their minds. If you read a corresponding text in the Gospel of Matthew, I believe it is, they still didn't quite get it. But now Jesus opens their minds to understand and now he makes a promise, the second part, another S word, spirit. The spirit, the plan of salvation is not quite done. Oh, the, the work of atonement, the work of redemption certainly is accomplished and done. Jesus has paid for all of the sins of all people for all time. But the plan of salvation is still not quite completed. The work goes on. Think of that. You and I are part of that plan of salvation. That plan involves us, empowered by the Holy Spirit to be the instruments to carry that good news of the gospel out to other people so they would know. It, it grieves me to think that, that Jesus paid for all of the sins of all people for all time, and yet some people won't receive the blessing of that because they don't believe, that maybe they don't even know. And yet they will be lost unless they truly believe. Today, 514, we mourn, and it's, it's appropriate that we do, mourn over the 10 people who lost their lives in that tragic mass shooting in Buffalo. Ten people, though. Uh, that, as tragic as that is, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people who are losing their lives in eternity because they don't believe. And it was bought for them. Jesus already picked up the tab for them. He already paid the price. And now salvation could be theirs if they knew. And if the gospel with the Spirit's power worked in their hearts and brought them to faith, they would know the joy of salvation as well. We are equipped, aren't we? We have God's holy word. We have Sunday school, uh, but it's a challenge for us now. We've gone through confirmation. We've we have Bible studies and we continue to grow and are equipped in that word. And God blesses us in the sacrament and these means of grace to send his spirit into our hearts. And now we're called to go. And so the, the third S word, what was the first one? Staging. Then what? Spirit. 
Yeah? And now sending. That's the one we forget about, sending. Now we are those who are sent to go out. And he doesn't just send us out into the world all on our own. He empowers us. He gives us the, the power of the Holy Spirit. He goes with us. What did he say at the end of Matthew? Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As you go to the ends of the earth, he's with us to the ends of the earth and the end of the age. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire, and you will receive that power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Why? So you can go to heaven? Well, yeah, so that you believe and that you are saved, but so that you will be my witnesses. And, and it's not going to just be witnesses here in, in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. No, in Jerusalem, sure, we're witnesses in Elma, to be sure about that. But that doesn't mean our mission stops there. Our mission can, can go to other places in the world, and we have an opportunity with our brother Bill to be a part of a, a mission effort in Ecuador. But there's so many other ways that we can be involved in this mission of the church to carry that good news of the gospel. That's the sending, not just in terms of financial support, but even our own going. Go to Jer Jerusalem and wait for the power of the Spirit, but that has come. We don't have to gaze and wait anymore. The, we're going to celebrate that on Pentecost. We have received the power of the Spirit. But on that ascension day, they were watching it, what all took place, and now he was lifted up, but not with ropes this time. He was lifted up by the, the blessings of the Father. And now he sends us out equipped in his word and empowered by his spirit to go to those who are perishing in the world. We're, we're celebrating Mother's Day. And we remember, now there, there are really fantastic mothers and there are sadly some really less than fantastic mothers mothers. But most mothers, if they see their children are hurting, what are they going to do? Are they going to do something? Are they going to help? Are they going to, you know, try to uh, alleviate hurt or pain or suffering or, uh, or encourage them when they can? Of course they are. It's part of the DNA of being a mother, it seems. They're not just going to say, well, you know, somebody ought to do something. You know, they're not just going to say, we, on the plane yesterday on the way home, there was a baby crying, uh, mostly a takeoff and, and landing. I think the pressure changes in the, her, or the child's ears or something. But, uh, but that mother was holding that child and trying to comfort him. You know, didn't say, hey, stewardess, can you do something about this baby? And yet that's what we do as a church. We, we want to maybe throw some money into missions and say, you know, yeah, that, that feels good. We should be a part of that. But my Lord, we should be those. We are those who are sent out. Each and every one of you has in your tool belt the power of the Holy Spirit to go and to share the good news of the gospel. I like the way Paul in his letter to the Romans puts it. He says, how beautiful are the feet of those who carry that gospel out. I forget what chapter, Rev. Take a look at Romans and you'll see it there. And how, he asks the question, how can people know if someone's not sent? And how will they know if that person that's sent doesn't go? They won't know. How beautiful are the feet of you and I who hear that word sending and we go. We're sent out and we're equipped. So it's time to get going. You know, we tend to be like those disciples gazing at times. How wonderful for us to know Christ's work of atonement and, and paying the price for our sins that we might be forgiven has been accomplished. Wow, that's so comforting to know that. He's the Messiah and he offers us that forgiveness. And, and we have the sequel, there's a little extra S word, the sequel that says he will come back at the end of time to judge, of course, but to take those who believe in him to be with him in his kingdom forever. In the meantime, he, he says, now I am sending you out. Stop gazing 
at your churches. Stop gazing at the properties and the programs and all the traditions and all of these things that get created by man and we call that church. What's the real mission of the church? Maybe, maybe St. Paul was blessed. Burn the building down and get going. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't really want this building to burn down. But you get the point? We invest so much into our ways of doing things, our comfort zone here. What, what church did the Apostle Paul belong to? Where was his home congregation? I, I guess you might possibly say Jerusalem and the temple, maybe. He didn't get there very often. Why? Because he kept going. And it, if any of you miss church next week because you're going somewhere to share the gospel, we'll, we'll write you a certificate of dispensation. <laughs> you get the point. The, you know, what a wonderful place to gather, to encourage, to hear the word, to receive the sacraments. But we need to realize our mission is that we're sent out. And the ascension gives us a wonderful time to celebrate that sending. And we'll do so on Pentecost as well with the power of the Spirit into the world. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, one time you said the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We have a lot of workers, Lord. They don't want to leave the barn and go out and harvest. They don't really want to be a part of going out into Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so we pray, Lord, impress upon us that you have called us and you send us out as well, empowered by that same Spirit, equipped in that same Word. Now, Move us by the power of your spirit and the zeal of the mission of the church that you have bestowed upon us to go, to get going, and to share the joy and the hope of salvation with all people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now rise and join together in confessing our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated now as we receive the offering, and as the offering is presented, we join in singing the offertory.
shall I render to the Lord his benefits to me. I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you O Jerusalem the king invites his people to boldly pray and seek his will for our lives Loving Father, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to bear our sins and to be our Savior. By his death, he has destroyed death. By his rising to new life, he has given to us the guarantee of life forever with you. By his ascension to heaven's glorious throne, he has proven that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, in your mercy, Sovereign of all, we thank you that nothing is hidden from your sight. In mercy you have redeemed your fallen creation by reconciling sinners to their creator through the sacrifice of Christ upon the cross. Look with favor upon us and our families, our congregation, and our community, guiding our steps in the way of peace. Grant boldness to all who bear your name, Rising, raising up faithful men and women who serve in positions of leadership among us, that we may live out our callings under your authority and care, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Restoring Redeemer. The brokenness of our lives bears witness to the fact that without you holding us together, we are lost and hopeless. Rescue those who despair and grant patience to those suffering in times of trial, anguish, and loss. Comfort those who are saddened by the death of those whom they love. Fill with perfect peace those who belong to you. We pray, Lord, for those among us and, and those whom we know as we name them in our hearts who grieve over the loss of loved, loved ones. Let all who hunger and thirst for what you alone can give find solace and rest in you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Crucified, risen, and exalted King, our Lord Jesus, with the ancient worshipers who clapped their hands and shouted their praises at the coronation of their sovereign, we rejoice in your exaltation to the Father's glory and in your promise to come again. Preserve us in faith until that coming glorious and awesome day. Instill in us an ever-deepening reliance upon your word and spirit. Create in us hearts that are ready to receive your presence as you draw near to us again this day in your body and blood. Make us one, Lord, even as you are one. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, this day, there are many things upon our hearts that we pray for. We celebrate and we give thanks to you for the gift that you have given us in our mothers who have cared for us and loved us and so many others who have taken on that role of encouraging and watching out for us throughout our lives. We praise and give thanks to you for their mothering love and care. Lord, in your mercy, reign in our hearts. We ask your blessings upon all who are ill and those who are in need of your healing blessing. For Laura Lee, for Cindy, for Sue, 
We ask your blessings upon Pastor Bleemaster in the hospital. Watch over and keep him as well as his wife, probably at home, who needs care and keeping as well. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your church, O oh Lord, for Faith Lutheran Church that we stop gazing and get going. We pray for brothers and sisters of the faith over at St. Paul in Blossom. And we ask that you would comfort them in this tragic time of the, the burning of the church building. We also pray, Lord, that perhaps that fire be the fire of a spirit that moves them to be continued to be strong in the work of the church as they rebuild and perhaps refocus their vision. We ask your blessings, and Lord, use us to help them in any way that we can. Lord, in your mercy. We ask your blessings upon our work together to provide for children in our Under the Apple Tree program. And we pray that it would continue to be strong and serve families and children in our community. We ask, Lord, your blessings upon other social ministry programs that we support, Lad and Fish, and we ask you to work in us and through them to come to the aid of people in South Buffalo or in this area with food that they desperately need. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your blessings for mission efforts around the world. And we pray for people in the Republic of the Congo who have suffered under massive floodings. We pray, Lord, that you would come to them and be with them. Comfort those who have lost so many loved ones. We pray for their families and those uh, who have been so affected by all of this and in many other areas of the world, those who endure great loss. Today, a very special day for us in the Buffalo area. We continue to lift up the families and the friends of the 10 who lost their lives in the Tops mass shooting and comfort them. And we pray, Lord, show us the way and, and bless our leadership and our people to find ways to address this problem of, of just kind of random uh, murder and, and using misusing of weapons to hurt other people. Lord, in your mercy. All these things we pray with confidence in you, O Lord, as our King, who reigns supreme and governs all things in heaven and on earth for the benefit of his people. We entrust our prayers into your care. O gracious Father, for you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all of the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples and he said take and eat this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, 
He took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In the same way, as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and to confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements from our elders. Good morning. First of all, I want a very blessed day to all, all of our mothers gathered here today, and also as we remember those who cannot be with us, mothers and grandmothers that are having a heavenly celebration as we remember them as well. So I hope you all have a glorious, blessed day. Uh, just a reminder, there will be no Bible study this morning after the church service, and also next Sunday as well. Um, as always, uh, Fish is looking still for the month of May uh, vegetables. Um, there's, a, there's a list of announcements. I certainly won't go through them all, but uh, there may be something of interest in there, in there, so I encourage you all to read through it. Is there uh, anything that anybody would like to add? Okay, if not... We will continue our service with our closing hymn, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High, in the Red Song Book, number 126. And I urge you to stand if, if possible. Thank you. From the grave to the sky. 